Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Tekenu, Obelisk of the Sun. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Ancient Egypt and welcome to the mighty Obelisk of the Sun. This is a very cool obelisk, big and tall, and hugely important to gameplay because this obelisk casts a shadow. And any dice that we would want to draft in the shadow are going to be a very different proposition than the ones that are in the sun. And over the course of the game, this will rotate. So the light and the dark and the twilight in between will constantly be moving, and that's going to be a big part of how we navigate this game. And I'm going to be doing a solo run-through today, which means I will be playing uh, Gets Botan Common instead of Tutan Common, which is represented by this series of actions that the bot, Botan Common, wants to do. Now, Botan Common pretty much does all the stuff a human player would do, which is they have a mechanism for choosing what die they're going to draft on their turn, but then they do pretty much the same type of stuff as us. So, you're still going to get a pretty good idea of how this works as a two-player game. Really, the most significant changes in a two-player game, before we get going, first of all, everybody gets two decree cards and picks one. So, I've got to decide, do I want this, which is, wow, before the end of the game, final scoring, I get one ex it's like I get an extra turn. That's a pretty big deal. Or I get three points per technology. Again, at the end of the game. These decrees are all at the end of the game. Hmm. You know, if I were gonna be playing a full run through, I might take this get a free bonus. I mean a 17th turn effectively at the end of the game. But I think this is gonna be a little bit better for demoing. So I want to get technology cards, which is something I want to do anyway. So this is my secret goal. And at the end of the game, I can score up to three of these, although each one has to have a unique icon. So if I had both of these, I could trigger both of these. There are more decrees I might pick up over the course of the game. But this is the one I've got right now. I keep it secret. I keep it safe. Then, after everybody's got their secret decree, they know what their secret goal is about. There's all kinds of them, as you might imagine. Uh, we are going to have a number of cards plus one that indicate starting resources and bonuses we could get, and there's a snake draft. Every player ends up getting two of them, and that determines turn order and how we start out. It's slightly different. Uh, in a two-player game, there'd be five. Each of us get two. In the solo game, I'm just going to have three of them. And of course, the game comes with a bunch more. These are just five, just so I could give an example. I'm going to take three of them and pick two of them. And no matter what, uh, uh, Button Common is going to be first player. So, I can start... With five resources of my choice, I can start with two gold, which is basically a wild card. I think I'd rather have five specific things, although two gold is not bad. And I could start with a building already built, increasing my production. I think I'm definitely going to do this one. That is a big deal. And normally, I have to lose the happiness of my people to build these buildings. But since this is a bonus at the beginning of the game, I'll get to build it for free. So I'm taking that one. Now, if I were playing against a human player, the numbers at the top determine turn order. Who, whatever, If I took these two, my initiative would be 15, and whoever has the highest total would get to go first. But in a solo game, uh, Bot and Common is always going to go first. So I think I'll dump that one, because its main value is its high number, which means nothing in a solo game. I'll go for these. And so I get five resources, and I can start out with um, an increase to my food or my papyrus production. And that's actually perfect for me because I need papyrus to get more technology. So uh, I'm going to do this, which means I take one of my buildings and I build over here. Normally to do this, I'd have to lose a happiness, but not right now. And it says to put it in row three and uh, to put it in the uh, papyrus food production house. So this gives me one papyrus. Which is what would have happened if I'd built this under normal circumstances. I'd get a papyrus. And my papyrus and my food production has gone up. So that's what this gave me. And I didn't have to spend happiness to do it. And then the other one, I get five resources of um, you know building materials. Granite or limestone or papyrus or food. Bread. I think I just want a whole bunch more papyrus. Yeah, I'm going to be the papyrus king of ancient Egypt. Oh yeah, baby. There we go. So I'm just starting with a ton. Now, everybody always starts with one gold and one scribe. And we all start with our secret goal. And I just gave myself one building and a whole bunch of resources. Now, a bot in common, 
There's variable difficulty levels. I'm playing medium difficulty level, which means the bonuses he got... Well, he always gets to go first. And he's got two buildings built over here. And he's got a statue already built. And he's got a pillar already built. And he is first. All right. Oh, and also, he has a bump to the norm normal players have to start with two happiness. He starts with um, four, and he starts with seven population. So he starts with more population and more happiness than I do. He's got a lot more going on, um, and we'll see how well I can uh, do trying to beat him. And now we are ready to play. And on a player's turn, they pick any one of the dice, provided it is not banished. And what that means is the dice on the inner ring. Over here, on the sunny side of the obelisk, dark icons are banished. We cannot take them. It is too sunny. They cannot be grabbed. Likewise, over here on the shadowy side, light uh, dice, like uh, this uh, yellowy dice, it is banished. I cannot take that, even if I want. Um, so, I have to take uh, and one on the outskirts, which represents pure. In darkness, black dice are pure. In the light, white dice are pure. And of course, the purity and, uh, uh, and taintedness is uh, what the other... Things are either banished, tainted, or pure. And over the course of the game, dice that don't get taken will change based on where the sun is. So... Um, on a player's turn, they end up taking a die. That's what Bot and Common is going to do. He does it based on this little randomized pyramid that was set up as part... This is going to be the first action he does. He is going to do an Osiris action. So we know he's going to do that, which means he looks over here. Here's the Osiris, and he always takes the highest value die of whatever action he's going to do. So he's going to claim this die. Now... The color and the number, they matter if you're a human player, but uh, the bot, he doesn't care. He just does whatever the god action is, and he just takes the highest value die he can. So this is a die I cannot grab. This neutral die that was in the tainted area, he takes it. Okay, and he is going to do an Osiris action, which means he is going to build another building. And there's a lot going on here. There's effectively an area control thing going on because there are 12 points to be had uh, in you know three for each of these columns for whoever has the um, most influence in these columns. And uh, he took a three. So I actually misspoke. He does care about the number. He wants to put one of his buildings in row number three. And by default, he will always choose a column where there's the fewest stuff possible. So, I mean, uh, three of these four columns are occupied, so he's going to jump over here. He has now taken majority in this column, this column, and this column. That's nine points coming his way at the end of round eight, after we've taken eight turns. I'm getting three points for having this column. And that was his first turn. Now, the only difference is, if a player had come over here, and taken that three, they again would build, they would choose where they want to build, and they would have to sacrifice one happiness of their people to do it. Uh, Botanu, he doesn't really keep track of resources. He can do whatever he wants. It's just he uses this pyramid to decide what he's going to do. All right, so I am now definitely losing over here on the area majority for all our production. Oh, Another thing, if Bodeno were a, a human player, he would have immediately gotten some limestone and he would have increased his limestone and his granite production. But he doesn't care about that. He effectively already has infinite limestone and infinite production. He's just over here to grab the points by monopolizing that column. All right, now it is my turn. And I am going to actually stop and think about what do I want to do. Remember, I cannot take this die or this die because this light die is in the darkness, this dark die is in the light, so they are forbidden. Um, but any of the other dice I could take. And I, what I need to think about is, what do I want to do? Well, I know what I want to do because... I get three victory points for every technology card. So, I want to snag this technology card or one of these two technology cards. Now, at the beginning of the game, this is the only one I can grab because if we look over here, my starting happiness of my people um, is, a, is a, yeah in this area, this tan area. That means I can get any of these cards in the tan area. I've got to improve my happiness until I get into the red area. That means I'd have access to all of these. If I improve my population, 
which is the maximum. The higher my population, the higher my happiness can go. And then I improve my happiness to get up higher. Then I can we bring new cards out here, and I can have access to all of them. But at the beginning of the game, by default, at the start, everybody has five total population and two total happiness. Since I'm in the gray area, I can grab any of these. So, that means if I want to um, do... The uh, the grabbing a card. That means I come down here and I think this is the god Thoth. I need to do a Thoth action. Which means I need to grab one of these dice. Now there are no, um, de, um, what do you call it, uh, banished dice. Because in the Twilight there are never banished dice. There's always room for light and for shadow when we're in Twilight. So I could grab any of these three dice. But the number I grab is going to matter. Because there's a little reminder down here. That, if I grab a 1 or a 2, I just get one of these cards, because this is the area I have access to based on my happiness, I get it for free. If I grab a 3 or a 4, I must spend 2 parchment, but I get 2 cards. And if I spend a, I grab a 5 or a 6, I must spend... I, I, I can't like say, oh, I could spend up to 3. I must. If I do a 5 or 6, I must be able to spend 3 parchment or gold. And remember, I do start with gold, which is a wild. And then I grab 3 cards. So, these are the, I could grab this 5, which is pure, um, because this is a twilight die. Um, there are 5 colors of dice. The gray are neutral, they don't care about light. Um, there is bright white, there's kind of off-white, yellow, then there's brown, and then there's blackness. Though That's the range of colors. And the brown and the yellow, when we're here in twilight, become pure. Brown and yellow are pure in Twilight because they're the in-between colors. And anything else becomes tainted. And, as you might imagine, all things being equal, I'd probably rather grab a pure die. So maybe I should grab this. If I grab this one, or if I grab this one, a uh, five, either, it's either going to be a pure die or a tainted die. That means it's a five. I need to spend three Papyrus and I'll get all three cards. Now, strictly speaking, I really... I'd be happy with just one card, because really, I'm just here for the technology. Because unlike everybody else, this technology is worth three points to me at the end of the game. But I don't mind grabbing these. And remember, I grabbed a ton! A metric boatload of Papyrus. I could have grabbed any combination of stuff, I just got tons of Papyrus. So, I think I am going to go on ahead and claim this five, which means I'm doing this action, which means I need to spend three of my six starting Papyrus. And that means I'm going to grab all three of these cards. Boom! That is a big move! But let's come back to these cards in a second, because the die I took... Remember, because this was a Twilight die in Twilight, it was not all the way light or all the way dark, it was in between in Twilight, that means it's pure. I put it over here uh, to indicate that it was a pure die when I took it. It is a very important element of this game that I try to maintain balance. That I don't become too pure or too tainted. Because the closer I can be equal to the two sides, to the two sides of the scale, um, the more likely I am to hold on or to take first player. Which is uh, kind of an important thing. So, in the future, now that I've got five purity, I'm going to start wanting to get some tainted dice to offset this purity. And that's going to affect how I draft stuff in the future. So anyway, so this one over here, I triggered the action, I spent through the nose to get all three cards, and now, and everybody knows, I, one time, these are blessing cards. You can use them once and then they're gone. I can use them whenever I want. I can perform an Anubis action. That's a big deal. One time when I'm producing resources, I can double the resources I produce. That's a big deal. But most importantly, this is nice. This is a technology. This is a power I have for the rest of the game. These are one time and then they're gone. This is worth three points to me because of my secret goal. And when I produce, I can adjust the die up to two and get additional resources of the same type. So, this makes me a much better producer than I would otherwise be because I have more control over the production die and I get extra stuff. And on top of that, if I, I could use both of these cards when I'm producing and do a double production off of a souped up production. So I'm very happy with that. So these are the cards I have. These are public knowledge. This, my secret goal is private, but this is public that I have got all this going on. Now, at the end of my turn, new cards come out. So we've got uh, a new blessing and uh, another new blessing and another technology that I might want to grab later. So. We'll worry about those in a bit, because my turn is over. Okay.
Although, man, I just looked at this. This is another production technology, which is if I overproduce, I get victory points. That is very cool. Oh, man. So, I could become a producing machine, which is great, because normally in this game, production is the last thing you want to do. We are, under normal circumstances, only going to take 16 turns. 16 dice we're going to grab. And we always want to use these dice to do god actions all around the board. But instead of, when I took this die, uh, this pure die, instead of taking it to do this action here, I could have said, I'm producing. Yellow dice produce papyrus. I could have produced five papyrus with this. The problem is, my maximum production allowed is only three. Uh, because I've upgraded this. So I would have gotten three papyrus off of this five, and the other two would have been wasted. I would have been greedy. And that wasted, that overproduction, would have gone into my tainted. Which maybe I want to do, because remember, I'm trying to maintain balance on the scales. But uh, because I've got this, I can manipulate the die when I do production. I could turn this from a 5 into a 3, and then I wouldn't overproduce. I wouldn't be greedy. Uh, you know, etc., etc. So, anyway, I didn't produce. But anyway, whenever you take a die on your turn, usually you want to trigger the god action that's in the associated area. But sometimes you're desperate for goods, because you're just bone dry, and you will... Kind of feels like wasting a turn and do some limited production. But for me, production is a little bit more exciting. You might see me doing some. Well, hey, I'm, I'm going to want to produce some um, uh, more papyrus once I've used all this papyrus up, getting more technologies. Also, papyrus is what you spend to increase your happiness. And I want to increase my happiness so I can get some more technologies as well. I definitely am focused like a laser on ancient Egyptian technologies. Anyway, my turn is over. Now... Um, it is uh, Bot and Commons turn again. And the first move is always activate the bottom left space of their little randomly generated pyramid, which they did. Now, they next up, they're going to do a Thoth action, or they're going to do... Oh, I can't remember the names of all the gods. A um, Oh, but we do have a little player aid right here. They're going to do a Hawthor action or a Thoth action, which means um, if... They come over here, they're going to grab cards, just like you saw me do. If they do a Hawthor action, they're going to try and construct buildings around the temple. This is a reminder. The turn structure is really easy. Take a die, uh, either a pure or tainted one, to perform a god action or produce resources up to your production. Um, and in addition to this, I didn't mention, everybody starts with one scribe, and scribes are a resource you can get more of, you can always spend scribes. You can spend one scribe to increase or decrease the value by one or two points. You can spend two scribes to do an Anubis action, which basically turns your die into a wild card. It's like it, you could take any die, even forbidden ones, and do whatever you want. But anyway, that's, uh, the, uh, you know, that, that's, that's for later. It's his turn. He's going to do one of these. How do we find out? Well, I knew he was likely to do this or this, but I didn't know what. How do we find out? We flip the coin of destiny. Wee! And it came up like that. That says he's going to go diagonally. He's going to do the Hawthor. If it had come up like this, he would have instead done this. So I know what he's doing now, and I know next turn he is either going to do the raw action or he's going to come here. And the action he does here depends on what dice are still available to draft. He's going to try and, and draft the best white die he can, wherever it might be. So, he's quasi-predictable, Botten Common, but you can never be 100% certain. But right now, we know he is going to be constructing. And what that means... He's going to take another one of his buildings. There's two places we can build buildings. Over here, and this increases our production and lets us compete in these area control battles for, co for points when we get to scoring. Over here, at this big temple complex, we can build buildings on the outskirts. Although, uh, depending on the player count, you uh, there are some places you can and can't build. As you can see, in a three or four player game, these spaces are off limits. So anyway, he can build in any of these spaces, these inner ones. And and if he were a human player, he would have to spend bread. But remember, uh, Bot and Common effectively has infinite resources, so he doesn't bother to keep track. So he can build in any of these. And 
As a human player, I would have to choose where I'm building based on how much bread I want to spend and all that. He, however, because he has no restrictions, he just builds in the way that will give him the most points. And buildings on the outskirts of the temple score points based on how many matching columns they can see. Uh, and that's a reminder over here. If somebody is, well, if a human player is building a building, first of all, they get resources. If I were building a building and I say I, I came here and I spent three food, then I would get a papyrus, one of these um, limestone, one of these granite, one food, and one faith token. You get one of each of the available columns. If I could see my columns, I would get points instead of over the resource because my column would effectively be covering up what that space would normally get for me. But um, as that's as a human player, I get all these resources. Remember, he's got infinite resources. He uh, doesn't care about getting more papyrus or any other stuff, but he does still get the points for building such that he sees his columns. And as part of setup, he had one column in the central spot. So that means he could build here or here, and he will score three points. Now, um, the rules say that if there, if there's, you know, if there, if if he had a column here then he'd go like this, because then he'd be getting six points. But he only has one column, so there is an equal chance. So it's a 50-50 uh, flip. Which side he's going to go? I'm going to roll a die and say on a 1-2-3 he'll build here, on a 4-5-6 he'll build there. Alright, so this is where he's building. Alrighty, and he just snagged his first three points. Oh, I should say, oh, we already started with ten points, so he's grabbed even more. So that was it for him. And again, that is very much like a human player. If I had chosen... Oh, whoops, I forgot, by the way. I have to start his turn. Folks, this is why you watch the Klingon subtitles. I'm sure Paulo already pointed out. I forgot the most important thing. When he came here, uh, he said, I want to do a Thoth action. He had to take the best die he could. This um, Twilight uh, lit die was verboten because it's in shadow. So he couldn't take this six, which means he took the five. And he doesn't care about blessedness or taintedness. Uh, you know, he just takes dice. So, he took that, he took the five, and uh, he then built over here. He didn't have to spend, and he didn't get any resources. He did get the points. And also, the other thing, the, you know, if this had been a human player taking this, their population would have increased by five because of the number five on the die. He does not get that automatically. He increases his population in a different way, which you might see as we go on. This is why he started with a little bit more population, because he doesn't get population off of this action. If it had been me, and I had built here, I would have gotten some granite, uh, and some limestone, some food, some uh, papyrus, but I wouldn't have gotten points, because that's not mine. But I would have increased my population. All right, so... That was his second turn. And we know his third turn is either, randomly, going to be to go visit Ra, or going to be to go wherever the highest value white die is. Which means, if I don't take a white die, he's going to want that one or that one. So even still, there are three potential places he might go. Although if I do take this action, then I know he's... Uh, well, then I know for a fact... Because this is the raw area. He will either go to raw, or he'll go to raw. So I do have a little bit of control over what he's doing. But I can't be certain. And uh, now it is my turn again. I'd like to get some more technology. And I could. I could just double down on this. I've still got Papyrus. And here's the deal. I would. I could take... Either one of these would be tainted. Which means they would offset my existing one. I have three Papyrus. I could go on ahead and grab three more cards. But I think I'd like to save Papyrus for spending over here on um, uh, Bastet, which is the party god. Um, that when I spend Papyrus and give it to the people, it makes their um, happiness increase. Because I'd like my happiness increase. Maybe I want to get my happiness up before, so I've got three technologies I have access to. I've got to get my happiness up. One, two, three, to hit that line. So, maybe I should go to Bastet. Which means, well, it means, um, because here we are in darkness, in shadow, there was no pure black dye over here, so there's no um, um, blessed dye, there are tainted dice. And I could take a 3, a 6, or a 6. And now, a 3 means I get, um, well, first of all, no matter what value dye I spend, or I get 3 or 6, I spend 2 papyrus, and remember, I've got 3 left, and then I move forward 
on my happiness track. That's the symbol for happiness. Woohoo! It's a big party! Yay! I move forward based on the value of the die. So I want to move forward as far as I can. That would be great. Although, remember, I can only move three spaces forward. So grabbing these sixes doesn't make any sense. But there's something else to bear in mind, too. The value of the die says, if I grab a one or a two, I move forward one or two spaces and I get two scribes. A three or a four, I get one scribe and move forward three or four. A five or six, I don't get any scribes. And remember, scribes are handy because they let me manipulate the dice as I take them. So it's good to have scribes. So I think I'm going to do, I'm, we're going to throw a party and try to get our happiness level up. That's going to be nice. I could take these sixes, um, but I won't get any scribes, and I can only move three anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and take this three. And um, because it is tainted, because um, I, I took it from nighttime and it wasn't pure black dye, it is tainted, it wasn't pure. And so, now, my balance is getting a little bit more... I'm, I'm five on the positive, I'm three on the negative. That's good. If I have to be off-center, I'd rather be on the uh, the blessed side rather than the tainted side, which will make sense as we go on, because eventually, after we take four turns, we are going to be judged on our balance. And in fact, over here, this is a way we keep track of player turn order. Jen and I found in a two-player game, it's pretty easy to keep track. So we just use these to keep track of our balance. My balance right now, I have positive five, but negative three, which means, or one, two, three, four, or yeah, five, one, two, three, which means I'm really at two. This is where my balance is right now. And in fact, um, you know, uh, Bot and Common does not care about balance. When we get to the first mat phase, they are at, they are just unbalanced. They are at three. So, as of this point, when we eventually get um, tested for maintaining balance in our work, I am doing better because I am closer to perfect balance. Uh, his, his number was chosen automatically. It changes in um, the second and the third scoring and whatnot. So, I'm pretty happy about that. And um, because I took a three, I give myself another scribe. So now I've got two of them, which gives me more control over the dice. And I move forward one, two, three. And just like that, that means I now have access to more cards if I want to come back down here and get some. Although it did cost me two papyrus. And now I've got one more papyrus and I've got one gold. Which means I could get two cards. I could get two technology cards. One of these and one of these, or both of these, etc., etc. So, that was my second turn. And now, folks, the moment you've all been waiting for. Every two rounds, um, and you can keep track because once all players have two dice they have claimed, every two rounds, Tekenu turns. The Obelisk of the Sun rotates. And now... All the lighting opportunities have changed. First of all, we go back to the bag, and we draw a dice equal to the number of players, which is two. And we um so all right, see so this white die is going to come over here. It's a six. This uh, gray die is over here. It's a one. Um, so there's more dice. To, more, new dice always appear in the shadow, which is moved. And because of the shadow, now this area is in shadow. It used to be. While this area was twilight, everything was tainted. In twilight, nothing is ever banished, um, but only the twilight colors, brown and yellow, become blessed. Now that this has moved to darkness, this darkness is ascendant. This used to be a tainted, now it is a pure dye. And we've got to make that change everywhere. Um, gray is always tainted no matter what, because it doesn't care about color. Both of these twilights are tainted. Meanwhile, over here, this used to be in shadow, so it used to be pure. It's tainted, but this is no longer blocked. Alrighty, and um, this now used to be tainted, but it's in the in the sunlight, so it becomes pure, and these become tainted. And over here, uh, the gray stays the same, and this is still this darkness um, is um, still forbidden because it's still in the light. Over here, twilight means both of these jump into the center. Now, they may sound like a lot. Thematically, it makes sense where everything moves around. But for players who think, oh, that's a lot to remember. I won't remember, you know, when, where does Twilight happen and all that. Thematically, as part of setup, I could have put the board like this. And it's a nice little at-a-glance, um, you know, iconographic reminder of how everything plays out. But I think the board already has enough icons, so I like it like this. And I just think about it in thematic terms, how everything works. 
So, we have rotated. This is the land of shadow. Now, this is the land of light. Different things are pure and tainted. And um, it's our buddy, uh, Botan's Common, again. And we will now find out where is he going. All right. Oh, and by the way, new white dice came out. If he chooses to come over here, that means he is going to do a Thoth action because the best white die, which just came out of the bag, is over here. I was thinking he was probably going to go to Raw, but now he might go over there instead. So let's find out what he's up to. Ah, he is moving sideways. Boom. So, this is his priority. He wants to get the best white die he can. If there's not, he'll get the best black die. And so this is a priority. There is a best white die he can grab. This one. So he takes this. And it's a six. So that means he is doing this action. Boom. All gone. He didn't have to pay Papyrus. He has infinite resources. And now, he does keep these. He never uses the power of blessings and technology and all that. These are just worth points to him at the end of the game. So he keeps these as part of the end of game scoring. Me, I use them for powers throughout. Plus, my technology is worth points. All of those are worth points to him. And I wanted that. That was going to be another... Oh, well. You know what? A human player could have taken that from me. That's what Bot and Common did. So now we've got some new ones that come out. Hey, it's another opportunity to do an Anubis action whenever you're desperate. Another production, when producing resources, get four limestone is a one-time thing. And my new technology that I am interested in, when I do the Hawthor action, which remember is the building up here action, get an additional two points per pillar. All right. And that's an ongoing thing. So if I get this technology because I like technology, that means I'm going to want to start building pillars and then I'm going to start building buildings that can see those pillars so I can get more points out of it. If that's the way I go. These ones are available to me as well because I am happy enough. I can't get any happier until I increase my population, but I have access to all of these cards. Okay. Um, oh, actually, wait a hold on a second. Nope. Yeah, he did not. He has not increased his happiness, so he was stuck down here. If he had one more happiness, he would have had access, and he would have taken the the uh, higher level ones first. Although these aren't implicitly higher level, all of these are drawn randomly. It's just these are harder to get to because you got to be happy to get to access to seven cards instead of only three. Okay, so that was his third action, and it is now my third action. And what am I going to do? Um, let's see here, boy. I want to get more technology. I could come over here and I could get a level 3 blessing, which means I'd need two papyrus, which I do have, because I've got one papyrus and one wild. And that means I could get two. I could get I've got three technologies I could choose from. They're all available to me, and I could really double down on that. Um and if I took the five, then I wouldn't be able to do it because I don't have three papyrus. But remember. Every time I take a die, if I want, I can spend a scribe and increase or decrease the value of that die by one or two. You can't wrap around. You can't turn a six into a one. But I could turn this five into a three if I wanted to be more tainted. If I wanted to get closer to perfect balance. So am I going to get those technologies? Well, I'm really kind of bummed. He took the one technology I wanted because I really wanted to focus like a laser on production. And he kind of he kind of snagged that for me a little bit. So... I'm thinking, thinking, stinking thinking, that maybe... Mm. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. I... I, yeah. Uh, I do want technology, but I've got... I mean, there's 16 turns in this game. i got plenty of time to get more technology. I want to take advantage of the tech I've already got and start doing big production. Um, but right now I can only do small production because I haven't increased my production capacity very much. I got a little bit as part of bonus, but I might want to start producing some more. So what does that mean? That means I come over here and do an Osiris action, uh, which means I can put more buildings out here. It costs me happiness to do it, but I can put more buildings out here and increase my um, papyrus, my food, my granite, or my limestone production. And I could fight him for majorities of these points. Because it's all about points in the end. So I think I'm going to go to Osiris, which means I get there. I'm going to take a tainted die, a tainted one or a tainted two, because remember, we are in twilight here. So the extremes, super bright and super dark, are tainted when we're in twilight. 
So, do I want the Tainted 1 or the Tainted 2? I think I will... I mean, well, this determines what row I'm going to build in. I want to build in row number 2. I'm going to take a Tainted 2, which comes over here. And that means, to build, I have to lose one happiness. Which means, oh no! I'm back to only these three cards. I don't have access to these now. So, that could be a problem, but I can always get happiness again by throwing another party. We'll worry about that later. So, I am... Um, because I am building in row number two... Row number two is the least valuable of all the rows. Because the higher we go up, the less resources and production we get. Whereas, if I were building down here in row six... Um, you know, which... You know, hey, I, in taking that two, I could have used a scribe and turned it into a four. And then I'd be building down here in row four, which means I get double the immediate resources and I increase two production costs. Or I can produce I can produce even more stuff down here. But here's the thing. When we get to scoring these columns, if there is an equal number of buildings in a column, you guessed it. The higher up we build, the uh, more the the that's the tiebreaker. So also, whoever builds in row number two, the first player to do it, gets a gold. And I don't mind having another wild card. So I took the two to build in this row. I've lost one happiness to build a second building. Uh, and now, if I put it here, I increase my papyrus production to four. So I can produce up to four papyrus in one action, plus all the other bonuses I have. But you know what? I already have a majority in this column. I think I want to come to one of these other columns and take the majority away from him, because we'll be tied. So... Do I want to get bread production, limestone production, or granite production? Limestone is predominantly how we build these columns. Granite, is, or food, is how we build these buildings. Granite is also used to build, um, in some cases, like uh, this pillar. If I want to build this pillar, I need two limestone and one granite. For this one, I need three limestone and one granite. But the main use for granite is building statues. Statues are incredibly powerful, incredibly important. So far, um, Bot and Common had one statue built for free at the beginning of the game. What that means is because Bot and Common has a statue here, if any player, Bot and Common or I, ever do the Horus action, which is the action that lets us build more statues, Bot and Common gets a bonus for free. Which means, I don't want to build these statues, because I'm giving him a bonus every time we do it. Um, and over the course of the game, but you know, on the same token, if I can anticipate... Oh, by the way, what did Bot and Common do? Bot and Common came here. If I can anticipate where Bot and Common is going to go next, and right now, he's either going to go to the best yellow or the best black um, die space, Say it's the black back, uh, the yellow space. That means it's, it might be over here. Which means if he takes one of these dice where I've got, then I would get a bonus. Now, in a higher player count, uh, it's only when other players visit your statue that you get a bonus. In a two or a solo player game, um, no matter who visits, you or your opponent, you get the bonus. So. I would like to start building statues. Statues can be built to the gods, and then that gives you passive bonuses based on what your opponents do. Especially if you can anticipate what they're going to do. And you can anticipate human behavior just like you can anticipate him. Um, statues instead could be built for the people, which means you could build here, 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 or here. They immediately get you some gold, which is a wild card, plus they give you more scoring opportunities at the end of the game. If I build a statue over here, this means... I have got another entry in both of these columns, which means I've got majority in both of them. I've got majority over here, and um, we're tied, but I'm up at the top of there. So, you don't get the passive benefits from player actions, but you get points at the end of the game if you build statues to people as opposed to gods. So, what was I talking about all that? Oh, right, because I was talking about... I'm over here. Do I want to be able to increase my granite production so I can build more statues? Do I want to be able to increase my limestone production so I can build more pillars? Especially since there is a uh, technology I might get later on that has to do with pillars. Do I want to increase my bread production? Which helps me in two ways. Helps me build the buildings over here, which score with the pillars. And it also helps me because, like in so many heroes, i got to feed my people. When we are judged, um, based on our balance, we also have to feed, and the amount of buildings we built is how much we have to feed. Currently, I owe one bread, which I don't have. I do have gold, which could stand in, 
So it would be nice to start getting some bread so that I can feed my people. If I then build another building before uh, the time comes, I'm going to owe two bread. And for every bread you can't spend, you lose three points. So I think I am going to build over here. And um, that means I immediately get one bread. And this is the bread I'm setting aside to feed my people later. And I have produced, or I have, I already had some bread production. I have now increased my bread production even more. Um, and by the way, if I can maximize my bread production, that's going to be scoring me more points um, over the course of the game as well. I'm not that high yet, but I am up here. And so I can produce more bread, which is going to help me build more buildings over here, etc., etc. And I've now got the majority of this column. So I'm looking at six points during scoring. And he's looking at six points. So that was my... And because I built in row two, I got the gold. If he'd taken the gold, he just would have trashed it because he doesn't care. He's got infinite resources. So I wanted to grab that in case he might have done it. All right. So that was my turn. It is his turn again. And we'll find out which way he's going with a flip of the coin of destiny. And he says, I want to go sideways. Which means he wants to grab the best black die, the highest value black die that he can. This one is not available because it's in the light, which means it's banished. Nobody can take it. This is a three, a one, and a two. So he's going to take more cards. Okay, that's good. Because remember, I was thinking, I wasn't that excited about these. I was hoping he might clear them out. He's going to take this three, because it's the best black die he can. And because he's doing a three, that means he's going to take two cards. Now, um, he can only take from here. He can't take all three like last time. He always takes decrees if he can, but there are no decrees. Next up, he always takes technology if he can. And now, so he took that, he's going to get one more of these. And like I said, he doesn't really care about the function. Um, but if, if he has equal ones to choose from, um, and there's not a higher quality, like he wants technology over blessings, since all he's got now is two blessings, he'll take the leftmost one. So he just grabbed that. All righty. And now, at the end of his turn, another blessing comes out, which is another production one. I'm, I'm a, So there's two production. If I could really um, you know, make production super, and, uh, oops, not this, another technology... Which is, during each uh, mat phase, which is a mid-game phase, get two faith for free, and I've got an onk value of five permanently. Now that's nice. Faith is a resource I can use to offset imbalance. By the way, I forgot to mention, I'm perfectly balanced. I've got five in um, the blessing side and the tainted side. I'm perfectly balanced. If, say, I was not balanced and we get to the mat phase, which is when we score, if I'm down here, not only am I crazy unbalanced, I'm going to lose points for being super tainted. Um, during the mat phase, if you have any faith, you can spend it to rebalance and get closer to perfect balance. This is saying, I get two faith for free. So that helps me maintain balance, which is nice. Is nice. Okay. And um, and my onk value helps me in the case of tiebreakers for various things. Okay. So that was his last turn. It is my turn again. And what am I going to do? Okay. I have... I've got the food I need to feed. Oh, so many choices. I mean, I want to... I mean, I'd like to get some more tech. Especially, I mean, I'd like before I do production, before I waste a whole turn getting a die, just get production. I'd like more production bonuses. But I don't want to burn. I'd rather get more papyrus first, which means I should produce before I get. Plus, now that I've fallen down on my happiness, I can't get to the goods, or I can't get. I, I have fewer choices. Man, I would love to get three gold in production. Ah. Hmm. You know what? I think. Since I had excess happiness, I think I am going to build some more over here and increase my production again so that when I do produce, I produce more. So, what does that mean? Well, that means there's only one die left here, and it would give me one taint, because uh, it's a darkness in the twilight, which isn't too bad. I'd still be closest to most balanced, so I'm still going to win, and I wouldn't get down to where I lose points for being too tainted. But that means I'd have to build on the top row, and that's not going to give me as much. Um, now, what I could do is I could spend a scribe and turn this into a three, and it's nicer, but I want to build, I want to get a big one. So here's the deal. Remember, I've mentioned this before the Anubis action. I have one of these that I got whenever I want. I can use this. If you trigger an Anubis action, you can take any die you want and treat it as if it was in the area you want to do. So I could take this this green this gray six from um, you know what's it 
Bastet and say, nope, it's an Osiris action, and do a big level 6 action, even though the die isn't there. Now I'll be using this. Now there's no way I can do it. One scribe lets me change a die, plus 1 or minus 1 or 2. Um, two scribes lets me do an Anubis action. I'm going to Anubis it up. We're going to say goodbye to that, and that means I can take any die I want, and let's see. Do I want to take a 5 or a 6 from someplace? Because here's the other thing. I don't want to get tainted. Most all the dice are tainted right now. There's only one blessed die, and it would be a level 2 thing, and I don't even have the limestone to do it. So, I was going to, whatever die I took, I was going to get tainted and potentially lose points. And I didn't want to do that. Because the interesting thing is, when you do an Anubis action, whatever die you take, it doesn't go on the scales. It comes down here in the Anubis area, and it won't affect my balance. So do I want to grab this 6 and do a super powerful one? That means, I mean, I'll be, I'd still like to be above him. I'd still like to be beating him. So I think I want to grab a 4. Is there a 4 from someplace? Uh, yes. So this would have given me 4 taint so that I could build a statue with, um, with the marble, with the granite, but I couldn't do that anyway. Um, so I am taking this. I'm putting it here so it does not affect my balance. I'm saying it came from here, so I'm doing a level 4 action, which means, again, I lose 1 happiness. I'm almost back to where I started. And I'm going to build my next building. Although, oh wait! Then I need two food. But you know what? No, no, no. Okay, I, actually, I don't have to pay the food until scoring. That's still like five rounds away. I do not have to pay food when we get to our balance test. So that's fine. I'm going to need to get some more food because I'm in another building. And if I go here, then I'm beating him in the granite column. If I go here, then I'm not beating him. Now, do I want... I mean, I this will give me some granite and some gold, and it means it produces... Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to beat him, so that's now nine points I'm making off of this, because I'm in control of three of the columns. I immediately get one more gold, which, again, is a wild. If I can find any, there we go. And I immediately get one granite. Now, the first statue I build, I need four granite, so I'm a long ways away. But you know what? I might use this single granite to build this or this pillar. Because ideally, you want to build pillars before you build buildings, as you saw, because can, you can convert those pillars into points. Alrighty. So anyway, so I got um, some granite and some gold, and I am increasing my granite and my limestone production capacity. Ooh. Although, you know what? No, okay. I'm not going to have used this four, which came from here, I think. I'm going to take this six instead. And I'm going to come down here. No, I am not beating him. Well, in fact, let's come over here. Yeah, I want this instead. So, yeah, this is better. This is better. So, instead of a gold and uh, the granite I took, I want this space. This just gives me two limestone, so I can start building pillars. It increases my limestone production by two. So now I could get a bunch of limestone so I could really start blitz and pillars. And it increases one other production of my choice by one. Um, and I love papyrus. So let's get my papyrus production up so I can produce more when I do actually stop to do it. Okay, so that's it. Now, I haven't taken majority. I'll still need to build something up here to beat him. Or heck, if I build a statue right here, then I'll be beating him. I'll be, I'll be, if I build a statue right here, I will be winning in all four columns, and that's 12 points when we eventually get to scoring, which is still five rounds away. Okay, so did I want that? <sighs> oh my gosh. Whoa. If I didn't do this one, let's put this back here. Forget about that limes or that, that papyrus and that two limestone. If I come over here, I'm, I'm not producing, I'm not getting better, but I'm going up one, two, and then three. Because I could, I could do, and I'm getting two papyrus, and now, if a single action, I can produce six papyrus, and I can get back to my original goal of trying to get technologies like crazy. I think, yeah, I think that makes the most sense. And because I'm now at the max level in one of my technology or one of my productions, I'm going to be scoring points for that when we get to the scoring as well. So I'm back in Papyrus Town, folks. We're going to start learning some more tech. We're going to throw some more parties. Um, and eventually, we're going to produce Papyrus, triggering these productions. So all that came off in Anubis action, which did not throw off my balance. I didn't get any more majorities here, but that's okay. I might want to build a statue over here and just get majorities here just instantly. And um, that's it. So, I now have four dice. Remember, at the end of every turn, after every two rounds, we rotate. 
And, um... So, we're, we're gonna rotate, and stuff is gonna change around. But you will notice, we are also pointing at this little icon. That means, before we deal with the dice, before more of them come out... Or actually, wait. Is that true? Actually, no, I think, I think yeah, I think do, dice do come out. <gasps> oh, shoot! I totally cheated, folks. Again, this is why you watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on. Before, um... There, there, there should have been two more dice in these areas. It should have been four dice coming out. Two player per player per space. So these were the other two dice that had come out here. All right. And I could have grabbed them. I didn't. Uh, I forgot. I'm sorry. So the bag is empty. Right. Okay. So we're going to rotate. We have to j uh, juggle stuff around. But in addition to... Oh, let's go ahead and do this. All right. So these... Um, this is Twilight. So Twilight colors become Ascendant. Uh, the, these uh, gray are always in uh, Tainted. This ascends. This goes into twi into uh, tainted because it's twilight. Uh, this is still sunny. This is still fine. This is um, now banished, and this stays here. And let's see. Yep. Okay. So those are all fine. We're gonna bring some more out, but first we are going to check our balance. This is a Mott phase, which is the god of something or other, uh, and 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 Mott is now going to judge us. It's at this point that we take our little markers and we figure out. Hey, I've got five on one side, five on the other, so I'm perfectly balanced. Other players might have been at negative four or positive because they weren't in balance as they took dice. Remember, the Anubis action didn't affect my balance. This is also that if players have faith tokens, they would put them on one side or the other. And you use them or lose them. They do not stick around to try to get balance. Right. And so, um, against uh, Bot and Common, Bot and Common doesn't worry about that. He just always starts out at plus three. I think next time he'll be at plus two, and then in the next time at plus one. Something like that. I'll look that up in a second. But, as it is, I won. Although, oh! Again, folks. Klingon subtitles. Because I forgot something at the very, very beginning of the game. Um, when we were choosing our starting resources and whatnot, remember I said that whoever had the highest total value becomes the first player? They are also the first to pick one of these extra cards. And I totally forgot to do this. Now, um, in the solo game, the uh, in, in the first round, Bot and Common just picks the zero or the one randomly. So he took this, which meant there was no gold for me to grab. And me, as the second player, I got to have one of these. So I could have, all this time, had an extra scribe, some extra population or happiness, or an extra faith. I think I would have... I think, honestly, I would have taken the extra population. One, two, three. So I could be that much closer um, to, up, up to getting access to green stuff. So let's say at the beginning of the game, I had taken this. Totally forgot about that. Oopsie doops. I, I, it didn't really have any impact. Because I took one, that it's not like I would have had gold. He he didn't care about what he had. So anyway. So, um, here's the deal though. These cards matter. Because when we are judged based on how balanced we are, if players are tied, uh, like say somebody is at plus three and somebody is at minus three, that's a tie. The tie is broke by your onk value. Although, to be honest, uh, bot and common always, no matter what card he takes, he has, a bot, he has an onk value of four. So he always loses ties. Um, so, I mean, he just takes these cards to keep them from us. Because I would have taken the gold if I could have. Um, but anyway, so, uh, as it is, it doesn't matter. I have clearly won. I have maintained perfect balance. He did not. He was not in the tainted area. And remember, bad balance in the tainted area loses you one, two, or three points. But he was in the positive. I was balanced. So that means, moving forward... I will be the first player, and we reassign the Ankh cards. And because I'm the first player, I get to pick. And that also means I'm taking two turns in a row, so that's not bad. And remember I was just saying, boy, if I could have, I would have. I'm going to take this gold now. Okay. And honestly, he doesn't care. He, If he had won, he again would have taken the best, either a scribe or gold. But uh, since he didn't win, it didn't really matter, so I got some more gold. I am the first player. Uh, hooray! And we have been judged. Okay, so now um, we take all our dice, put them back in the sack, and it would be at this point that we rotate. I rotated too soon. We'd rotate, we'd assign everything, and now two more dice for this area in the darkness, banished and tainted, and two more dice in this area. Again, in the darkness. Oh, um, uh, blessed and tainted. 
Because, you know, um, and now there we know the other dice are going to be coming later on. So, we've rotated, and also, while I'm effectively at perfect balance, as I remembered, he's basically at two. This is going to be his target. This is what I've got to beat um, four rounds from now when we go through our next balance phase. And, again, like I said, I, I kind of wish the game had come with extra ones of these so we can have them here, and we can have them here, because Jen, I find it's very useful to keep track of this as we go, rather than just resolving it at the end. But we're supposed to resolve it when we get to a mat phase, which I just went through. Okay. So, we are on to the next round. We have rotated, and I am the first player, and I've still only gotten one technology for my secret goal, which if nothing else means if I were playing as humans, they would have no idea what my secret goal is, because I haven't been, like, you know, obsessively doing pillars, which means my secret goal is probably pillars and stuff like that. And your, play your opponents not knowing what you're doing is kind of important, because if somebody knows I'm desperate to do pillars, they'll put a statue here so that every time I build a pillar, they get a benefit. Um, so, it's not it's not at all unreasonable to try to keep your cards close to your vest and not let your opponents know what's going on. So, now, remember, I need two food. In four rounds, we are going to do another balance phase, and we are going to do a scoring phase. Where we score anyone, any place where there's ease. Or, I'm sorry, no, that's the end game. Where we score, where is the icon for it? Oh, we score these. In four rounds, we'll score majority over here. We will score points for our um, buildings and pillars. We will score points for uh, various and sundry things. There's like a whole list of them. Right here, I think, on the last page of the menu. Yes, a very excellent last page. We will score points based on these resource districts. Points based on um, statues and pillars and buildings that can see each other. Um, points for our statues. If we build statues, not only do they give us passive bonuses, but the, the more statues we build, the more points we get if we get the granite to build them. Points if we've gotten up high enough on happiness. If we can push our population further and our happiness up to that, we get points for having a really big, happy population. Points um, for having maximum production, which I have done on one of them. Points um, for, uh, you know, uh, yeah, for, the, for the buildings. Yep, yep, yep. And... Um, Oh, and then we lose points if we don't feed. So, at some point, I need to get at least one more bread, or gold, because gold can stand in for anything, to feed so I don't lose points. And so I've got four more rounds. In two rounds, this is going to rotate again. In four rounds, this is going to rotate. We're going to do the balance um, ceremony again, and we are going to score all over the place. And uh, what do I want to do? i got a bunch of papyrus now, but my happiness is low, so I only have access to these... And I would rather have some of these. <sighs> so, am I going to uh, throw another party? I could take this gigantic six, which means I'd get no scribes. So that's okay, I've got scribes. I'd be able to push my population all the way up here. So I'd, you know, we would reveal what all the other cards are going to be. Although I can't get to them until my happiness goes up. But I could really throw an awesome party and really just knock my population. Um, you know, and if my population and happiness goes up, not only is there points, but there's other resources I could get if I really focus on this. Um, you know, or I could get a couple scribes and only go up a little bit. Or I could build a building. Because uh, I do have food. I, I don't have to use this food. I, I need one food and one gold, and I could build and get some resources. I don't have any granite or marble yet, so I can't build pillars. Although, again... I've got three gold. With three gold, I can do anything. Not anything, because my first statue, I would need... So, maybe. You know what? 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 Since I can produce six papyrus, which is huge, maybe I will go on ahead and snag a six. Now, the only sixes I can grab are tainted, which is going to put me way down into tainted town. Wait, no, no, yep, yep, all. All the blessed ones. Oh, wait, no, no, here's a blessed six. Because, all right, so I'm going to grab this. Uh, it is blessed because it was a twilight color in the twilight zone. And that means I could, um, you know, increase my population by six, like I was thinking. But instead, oh, wait, no, no. This is producing bread. Brown produces bread. I could produce six, but since I'm only allowed to produce four bread, I would get four. No, 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 no. I'm going to get some tech. I'm, I'm, all right, I... Yes, 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 yes. I want tech. I want to spin my papyrus. I'm going to snag one of these fives, which is tainted. Tainted die. And now I'm all the way down here. I, not, I need to start working on my balance to get back into the positives. But that means I can spend three papyrus, which I will do. Ugh! 
But I don't have these techs. I'd rather have... I don't want this tech. This tech is... This tech is better playing against human players. Since I know he's all... You know, well, and that's right. He always has a four. So he's always doing really well. So this means I would always win. If we tie, and we're more likely to tie now... I misspoke before. I said he's really bad at it. He's really good at it. This means I would always win in a tie for first player. And at the end of the game, instead of first player, it's extra points. And I'd have faith. So I could always... Uh, you know, Yeah, okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend all three of my Papyrus. Because I spent a five. And I'm getting all of this stuff. And when I eventually do production, it will be glorious. And in the meantime, I now break ties um, during the mat phase, and I've got extra faith for free for every mat phase from now on. Plus, this is worth two, three points for me because of my secret goal. All right, so I did that. I blew out all my papyrus. New blessings come out. And another new technology. What do we got now? Uh, when I do a Horus bonus, which is... This is when somebody visits one of my statues and I get the bonus from a statue, I also get granite. This isn't that great, because uh, I haven't built any statues yet. I really need to get up here to get some of these. Or even higher, because hey, you know, if I can move this up and move my happiness up, I could start getting more decrees in addition to more tech. So that would be pretty nice too. Oops, where were these? Ah, I forget, they were something like that. Um, but anyway, that was my big move. Oh, I forgot, by the way. After the mat phase in the solo game, the pyramid gets rebuilt randomly. So we find out what is it our man Bot in Common is all about. So we just take these randomly, make a new little pyramid. One, two, three. He always starts down here in the bottom left. And we know his first thing is he says, hey, Nobody else has done it, I think. I'm going to build a statue. And hey, you guys will get to see a statue being built. Now, if he were a human player, he would have to spend granite based on what his player card. The first one costs four. The second one, three. And then two, and then two. So it's like we get better at building these, and they get cheaper. But then for the final ones, they get more ornate. And they go from back to costing to two, to three, to four. So they get cheaper for a while, and then they get more expensive again to build them. Right. So, but anyway, he wants to do this action, which means he takes the highest die he can from this area, which is a five, which means he wants to build a statue um, in raw. And he has infinite resources. So now, if I make pillars or I make statues, he gets a bonus. Also, he triggered that bonus for himself. So, if this had been my statue, this had been a human statue, um, the bonus that I would get when he came here, uh, basically I look over here and say, oh look, here's the uh, god, it's this one up here. I would get a choice, and these were randomly set up every time. So I get a choice of either two population or three faith. He's a little bit different though. Since he doesn't care about population or faith, because he's got infinite population and no faith, um, he gets uh, a one or a two, if I recall correctly, gets him one scribe. Scribes are worth points to him. He never uses them to change dice, but like um, the cards he's grabbing, scribes are just straight up worth points to him. And so he just visited this, got a scribe bonus instead of the normal bonus I would have gotten if I were. He's built over here. And now if I do either of these things, I give him bonuses. If he does either of these things, he gets passive bonuses. Right. And so that was his first turn. And now I know next time he is either going to do Osiris and start trying to fight back for control of this area... And I know he'll take a four, which means he's going to build in row four. Which means he's going to, well, we'll see what he does. But he might instead just try to get the largest brown die. Which means he would come over here and take this one. So either he's going to come over here, unless I grab this myself, or he's going to come over here. And see, that's how I can anticipate him, the same way I could try to anticipate what players are doing based on their previous behavior. So, that was his turn. And um, now, I want to do something that is not tainted, because I need to get my balance back. So like this, this big old six, which will, um, which will definitely increase my population. Although, here's the problem. I need two papyrus. I just blew all my papyrus on stuff. Maybe it is time, folks. Maybe it's time to do the super production. Because I have all of these. Let's remind ourselves what all I can do if I do production. Um, I can, first of all, whatever die I take, I can change it. Normally, I have to spend scribes, but I can change production dice for free. Plus, I'm going to get one additional thing of whatever it is I'm trying to make. I can spend this, and I'll also get four limestone. 
And I can spend this, and I could do the entire production concept twice. And I could do that. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, let's go crazy, because there is no limit to the number of blessings you can play in response to an action, and they stack. So, what do I want to produce? Uh, whatever, whatever guy I take, and because remember, oh, remember, I can't take, um, you know, banished dice, but I can take any die. I would like to take a positive one, but uh, this is the only high-level positive one I could get, which um, is bread. I can produce four bread, which means I'd have two waste. Although, again, I could change this six into a four and get the perfect target. I'd have four bread. I'd be set for feeding and for building buildings for quite a while. But I'd like to get more papyrus, and I can produce six papyrus, which means I need a yellow. And here's the problem. This yellow is tainted. I would become even more tainted! I would come crashing down to... Oh, man! So that'd be pretty scary. Oh! Now, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. Um, because, here's the deal. If I wait one more round, this is going to rotate, and this is going to become blessed. And then I produce six papyrus... It'll be blessed, I'll keep balanced, and I won't have to use this power, but I'll produce one additional papyrus, and then I'll do it a second time, and then I'll do it a third time, so I will get 18, 19, 20, 21 papyrus, and on top of that, I will also get four limestone, and with the limestone, I could start building pillars. And with 21 papyrus, that is insane! I could just start grabbing cards like crazy, having parties like crazy, because I could just burn through papyrus like nobody's business. But I need to wait! I need to wait until next turn, when this goes from being tainted to blessed, so I could maintain. So I do have to wait. Which means I gotta do something else, I gotta do some kind of holding action until then. I don't know what to do! There's a lot of stuff to do, folks! But I think I'm gonna stop right there, because that should give you a pretty good idea of the basic flow of Takenu. And if you want to hear some final thoughts about the game now, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen, or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.